is the new Ford Bronco. Ford revealed this about three months ago as a major competitor to the incredibly popular Jeep Wrangler. And since then, I have received a truly unreal number of requests to review it. I can't remember a more hotly anticipated car in the entire history of my YouTube channel, except for maybe the C8 Corvette. So today, I'm going to review the new Bronco as much as I can. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online enthusiast car auction website with cool cars from the modern era. If you're looking to buy something cool from the 1980s and up, we have amazing variety with daily auctions running all the time. And if you're looking to sell a cool car from this era, Cars and Bids is the place you will get the most interest and the most money for your cool car. Check out Cars and Bids at carsandbids.com. I say as much as I can because Ford has a bit of a shortage of drivable Broncos at the moment. This vehicle is still very much in its prototype phase and it won't go on sale for at least six more months. So Ford said I was fine to come and review it, check it out, peruse it, as long as I was okay with the fact that this one doesn't have an engine. So today I'm going to do just that. I'm gonna take you on a thorough tour of the new Bronco, or at least as thorough as I possibly can can before I have access to a production-ready Bronco, likely sometime early next year. But first, the basics. The Bronco will be offered in two versions. There's the Bronco Sport, which is smaller, or the full-size Bronco, this one, which will be available in two-door or four-door configurations. The Bronco Sport is intending to bring a little off-roading excitement to the compact SUV world, sort of like the Jeep Renegade. But the full-size Bronco, this one, is the one one that everyone is talking about. Pricing starts from around $30,000 for the base model, and Ford will offer a choice between two engines. There's a turbo four-cylinder with 270 horsepower, or a twin-turbo V6 with 310 horsepower. And you can get a seven-speed manual transmission, although it's only available on the four-cylinder, the smaller engine. And of course, there's more to it than that. So today, I am going to take you on a thorough tour of the new Bronco and show you all of the quirks and features of the first real Jeep Wrangler competitor in years. Or at least I'll show you as many quirks and features as I possibly can for a vehicle that doesn't have an engine. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of this very prototype Bronco by going over first the trim levels, just to kind of establish a baseline, give you a general overview of the Bronco lineup. I have it here on my phone. So the base Bronco starts from around $30,000, and this is very basic, doesn't have much. It does have four-wheel drive, a removable roof, removable doors, and it comes standard with a manual transmission, like I mentioned. Now, this is technically a seven-speed manual, but first gear is just a crawler gear, like a low range gear for off-roading situations. So in street driving, most of the time you'd be using it like a six speed manual, but the seventh gear is there if you need it. Now on the base model Bronco, there are not many options, but there are two notable ones that are available throughout the Bronco range. One is the V6. Even if you get the basic, most base model-y base Bronco, you can upgrade to the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 for more power. The other notable option, again, on all the Bronco models is the Sasquatch package. Now this is an off-roading package that adds 35-inch tires, front and rear locking differentials, Bilstein shocks, and larger fender flares to accommodate all this stuff. This thing has the Sasquatch package, although these are actually 37-inch tires. They are massive, but you can see just how off-roady and done up it looks. And the cool thing here, like I said, you can get this on the base model. So theoretically, you could get the cheapest possible Bronco, only add the Sasquatch package, and be ready to go off-roading. But anyway, after the base model, the Bronco trim levels sort of split into two categories. There's more comfort-oriented trims, and there's more off-road-oriented trims. The next one up is the Big Bend, which is sort of your first comfort trim. It starts around $34,000, and it adds a few convenience items like a remote starter, leather-wrapped steering wheel, a few luxuries, plus it offers a few more available options that weren't offered on the base model. Next up from that is the Black Diamond version. This is the next off-roader model up. It's about $37,000 
and it adds a heavy duty skid plate in front, which you can see here. It has a modular bumper, so you can attach a winch and lighting, whatever you want to put on there. And it has rubberized flooring with drain plugs, so you can hose out the interior. This is the Black Diamond. The next one up is the Outer Banks model. This is again, sort of more comfort focused. This is around $40,000, and this is where it starts to get kind of luxurious. I suspect this will be a volume trim level with a lot of sales. It has leather upholstery, it has the 12 inch center screen with all the infotainment goodies. It has alloy wheels, LED lighting. This is the one I suspect most Bronco owners will want for on-road normal driving. And then the next one is called the Badlands. This is $43,000 starting price. And again, it's another off-roader trim. This one combines luxury and off-road. It doesn't have all of the features of the Outer Banks, but many are offered. And then it also adds disconnecting front stabilizer bars, which is great for off-roading, electronic locking front and rear differentials, and a more advanced four-wheel drive system for better off-roading prowess. Now, at the very top of the Bronco lineup is the Wild Track, which pretty much combines all of the above. This is like the Raptor version without actually being a Raptor. It comes standard with the V6 and it comes standard with the Sasquatch package. So the big tires, the Bilstein shocks, that sort of thing. This is basically the ultimate new Bronco. You get the big engine, the Sasquatch, plus all the luxury stuff, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, blah, blah, blah. This is basically the pinnacle of the Bronco lineup, the one you want if you want everything. But that's a pretty general overview of the Bronco trim levels. Now let's move on to the quirks and features. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the new Bronco, or at least this prototype version with the doors. There is a lot to cover about the doors, including the fact that they are removable. On all Bronco trim levels, you can remove the doors. But there's more than just that. For one thing, they are frameless. You can see as I open the door, there's no frame going around it, like pretty much every other vehicle. And the reason for this is, like I mentioned, the doors are removable. And by not having a frame going over the top of the doors, it's a lot easier to remove them, pick them up, carry them somewhere. It would be more unwieldy if they had a frame. And in fact, speaking of carrying the doors, look on the inside of the door, on the door panel, and you can see an area marked lift. This is where Ford is telling you to lift the door, I guess to make it as easy as possible to carry it. You don't often see a lift hand holding area on most car doors. But anyway, on the subject of transporting the doors, one very cool thing about the new Bronco is the doors fit in the Bronco. This is a big advantage over the Jeep Wrangler, which has door frames, and so the doors are too large to actually stick in the car. So if you're going to go off-roading, you have to figure out somewhere to leave your doors. Not so with the Bronco. Not only can you remove them and put them in the cargo area, but they come with a protective cover. So even if you're off-roading with your doors in your cargo area, they won't get bumped around and scratch your paint since they're in their cover. Now that is a really cool feature, but I have to say I am a little bit worried about frameless doors in a vehicle like this. I say that because with no frame around the door, the window just meets the roof, basically at the roof. But the roof is removable and the door is removable, so I have some fears about maybe wind noise becoming a problem. If you don't quite screw it back back down right after 50, 60, 100,000 miles? Is it really going to fit in perfectly? I guess we'll have to see. But for now, that is a cool benefit of the new Bronco. And by the way, another cool benefit of the new Bronco as it relates to the doors is the mirrors. You will notice when I open the door, the mirror actually stays put. It's mounted on the vehicle by the A-pillar and not on the door. And that way, when you remove the door to go off-roading, the mirror stays put and you can still see behind you. Now, there are pros and cons to this. Some Jeep people will tell you they actually like having the mirrors off when the doors come off because when you're off-roading, you don't really care to check your blind spots. And also it makes the vehicle narrower, which helps. But the benefit here is also obvious. You can have the doors off and the mirrors on. So if you want to ride around doorless, you can do it safer than in the Wrangler. But anyway, next up, time to climb inside the prototype Bronco. And when you open the door, you can see the door opens pretty far and it just stops short of hitting the mirror. They definitely thought quite a bit about this, how to make the mirror stay on and the door be able to come off. And you can see the tolerance here is just a fraction of an inch in order to make this design work. It's kind of cool. Another cool thing when you get inside, the grab handle on the side of the dashboard to help 
help you get in says Bronco, and it just looks cool, and it's also practical, of course, since you can use it to climb inside. All right, next step, I'm going to move inside the new Bronco and cover the quirks and features in here. But again, this is a prototype model. As prototype -y as prototype gets, nothing works in here, nothing operates. Look at these climate controls. They're all just fake. It's one individual panel, and that's true of everything. The pedals don't work. Nothing. This is not a real vehicle, but it's a great mock-up of what the Bronco will look like, and it gives us some insights into the quirks and features. And I want to start on the floor. You'll see no floor mats in here. Instead, you have a little hole. That's a drain plug. Several trim levels of the new Bronco offer drain plugs in the interior, so if it gets really dirty in here when you're off-roading, you can just hose it down and take out the drain plug, and your water washes away. Or if you go off-roading through mud or a swamp, whatever, you can, again, just pull the drain plug, and whatever gunk you get in here can be extricated from the car through the drain plug. Next up, moving on to the top of the dashboard for another off-roady quirk, you can see there's this piece that has holes in it and goes across the whole dashboard and says on it, off-road use only. What exactly is this? It's a GoPro mount. There are mounts you can buy where you can attach a GoPro to this and then slide it across to position the GoPro wherever you want. And of course, the reason it says off-road use only is you're not really supposed to have a GoPro directly in your line of sight if you're driving down a normal road. To further help you mount your GoPro, check this out. There's also a USB port up here. So you can plug in your GoPro while you're off-roading and it's filming your cool adventure. By the way, check out on this GoPro mount where it says off-road use only. There's a couple of bolts that stick it into the dashboard. And if you look closely, those bolts say Ford Bronco on them, which is just a really cool look. And that carries through to all of the exposed screws and bolts in this interior. They all say Ford Bronco or just Bronco. It's a very nice touch and I hope that little detail makes production. It's just cool to see. Next up we move into the center console and you can see this particular one has a manual transmission which is interesting because this is a Sasquatch package vehicle which isn't available with the manual but this is kind of a grab bag mix and match of various Bronco features mainly for prototyping and photography. But let's take a look at this gear lever a little closer. You can see the crawler gear is mounted down and to the left. Again this is not technically first. It's more of an off-road gear for low range situations. If you're stuck, you want to go really slowly to get out of something, push it down and to the left for C, and first is in its normal spot, sort of up and to the left next to reverse. So it's technically a seven forward speed manual transmission, although in road driving, you won't be using the crawler gear at all. And next up, next to the gear lever in the center console, you have a little plaque that reads, designed and engineered Ford in Dearborn, Michigan. This is a cool little touch. And again, you can see the screws on here say Bronco, which just adds to the appeal. I like that little plaque in there. Now next to that plaque you can see there's a little compartment. That is for your wireless charging. You stick your phone in there and it will charge as you drive around. My assumption is there will be something to keep the phone in place because this is an off-roady vehicle and if you're bouncing around off-road the phone will shoot out from that little area. So I suspect they'll have something in there to make sure it stays tight. Next up also in this vicinity I want to talk about all of the color match stuff in this interior. There is quite a bit. Obviously you saw the exterior was cyber orange, and that's carried through to many little places in the interior where you'll notice it, like for example, the grab handles on the passenger side, the one in the center console is rimmed in the cyber orange, and same deal with the one on the side of the dashboard. You can also see this color is on the off-road mode dial in the center, the one you twist to go into different modes, again the cyber orange. It is even on the climate vent little slider switch, that orange color, just a few little pops of orange throughout this interior, just in case you've forgotten the orange Bronco that you're driving. The coolest place you have the exterior color tied in though is definitely on the passenger side of the dashboard where it says Bronco, not only printed there, but printed in orange, again tying the exterior color into the interior. And next up, one other item in the center worth noting, the center console, although it is fake and doesn't actually open or do anything, you can see if you look at it from the front, it has a keyhole on it, so it locks. This will be a big benefit to people who like off-roading. When you have all of your doors off and your windows off. You don't really have a lot of lockable spaces inside this vehicle. There's the glove box, of course, but off-roaders are always looking for more lockable spaces in case they want to camp or go away from their vehicle when it's opened. So it's nice that the center console in the new Bronco does indeed lock. Now, next up, I want to talk about the materials in here. Even though this is based
basically just a prototype mock-up. You can get a sense of what they're using and you have a lot of rubberized stuff. You can see the climate controls while fake are clearly kind of rubberized like you would expect in an off-roader where stuff might get wet or rained on or mud on it. So you don't want it to be too nice or finicky or high quality. Same deal with the controls on the steering wheel. You can see these look kind of rubberized -y as well. Not exactly sure how they'll be on the production model, but if it's any indication in this one, same kind of deal. They made it more for durability rather than for quality. And the intent is for you to take it off-roading and get this stuff dirty if you must. And speaking of controls in this car, one interesting item worth noting are the controls in the center console. You have your power window switches in here and you also have your power mirror switch in here. And the reason for that is, of course, the doors are removable, even though the mirrors aren't. So if you have your power mirror controls on the door, you go to take off the doors, you won't be able to control your mirrors anymore. So they had to put them in the center so you can still use this feature even if the doors are off. Now, interestingly, the lock and unlock button is still on the doors. That means if you want to take off the doors, you have to unhook the electrical connection for lock unlock and for the power windows. But that's not that big of a deal. Ford tells me you can do it very easily. Just pull it off as part of the door removal process in mere seconds. And next up, more controls worth noting. These above the screen in the center, which I'll get to in a second, you have a series of rubberized looking buttons up here that all have various different functions. The one on the left is your front differential locker. The one next to that is your rear differential locker, which is a great feature not too many off-road vehicles have. Then next to that, you have another off-roading button with like an arrow that turns on a feature called trail turn assist, which is incredibly cool. If you're on a trail and you need to make a narrow, tight turn, you turn the steering wheel, but you can also activate this feature and it will stop the inside wheels on your turn and then sort of propel the outside wheels around. It helps you turn in an incredibly small space, which you do often encounter when you're on the trail. Now, the other controls up here are not really that remarkable. You have your traction control off button and your hazard lights pretty standard. But next, I want to talk about this center screen. In this vehicle, it's not functional, no surprise. Basically, nothing is, but there are some very cool features here. For one thing, it's a 12 inch screen, Ford's latest sync system, which is excellent. And I bet it will be very responsive and very easy to use like in other Ford models. The cool benefit here is there are trails mapped in this screen. Over a thousand off-roading trails are mapped in Ford's Bronco infotainment system. So you can take this off-road and know where you're going with your infotainment navigation screen. That's a great idea. And here's another cool feature. Even though I told you there's a GoPro mount you can use to film your adventures, the screen can also film your off-roading fun. Using the car's parking cameras, you can film your off-roading using the infotainment system, and it will even overlay various vehicle off-roading graphics onto your filming. So it will show you like your steering angle or your car's incline angle at that particular moment, in addition to showing all of your footage. And of course, your GoPro can't do that. That's a really cool feature in the new Bronco. And next up, speaking of screens, you have another one in the gauge cluster, quite a large screen, which I imagine will also give you a lot of useful information. Again, it doesn't really work in this vehicle at all, but you get the idea and I'm excited to try it out in real time and see if it gives you off-roading information, which I suspect it will. Now, next to that gauge cluster screen, you can see the actual speedometer gauge, this old school looking gauge, which is pretty cool. It only goes up to 120 miles an hour. There's not a lot of optimism for the top speed of the new Bronco. You don't really buy this for all out performance. And next up out of the front, front seat in the new Bronco, time to move into the back for the rear seat quirks and features. Now to get back here, there's a little latch on the side of the front seats. You pull it and then pull the front seat forward pretty easy. That creates just enough space to get into the back. It's going to be a little difficult for adults and it is especially difficult in the vehicles with massive tires like this one because there is a long step <laughs> to get in to the new Bronco. But once you get your foot up here, you can kind of push yourself in. Oh, and you'll make it. I suspect this vehicle will have power running boards. It might be nice if it did. And if not, I think your passengers are gonna want running boards if you get the 37 inch tires. Of course, those will screw up off-roading, so retractable ones are definitely the way to go. But anyway, now I'm here in the back seat. A couple of interesting items worth noting. For one thing, rear seat headroom is excellent. I'm six foot four. I have no problem at all with the roof in place sitting back here with my head doesn't touch the ceiling. It's about an inch or two shy, but adults can definitely get in 
in to the back of the new two-door Bronco. Now, as for legroom, let's give it a shot. I moved the seat back, put the seat back in place, and well, it's pretty tight, but the front seat looks like it's pretty far back. I can sit here with the front seat relatively far back and have my knees right up against the back of the front seat. So there is room. It's just not tremendously comfortable or a lot of room, but nonetheless, adults can get into the back of the new two-door Bronco and sit here in relative comfort, and that is impressive and nice to know. And next up, a few other notable quirks back here. For one thing, there's only two back seats. The two-door version of this vehicle, I guess, is a four-seater. Two seats in front, obviously, two seats in back, so don't buy this expecting to have a five-seater because it isn't one. Another cool thing back here, there's no center bar over the interior between the front seats and the back seats. The Jeep Wrangler has a center bar here, so you never get that full open air feel, but the Bronco doesn't. The center bar instead is behind the rear seat, so it's kind of out of your sight, but it still provides a rollover, roll bar safety purpose, so it's still there. And you can see they've mounted the rear seat dome lights on that rear center bar, but again, nothing in the middle. One other cool thing back here, rear seat drain plugs in the floor too. So it's not just in the front seat footwells. You want to hose down this interior, you can do it in the front and in the back to make it a little bit easier to clean out after a day spent off-roading. And next up, a few other interesting items back here. One, you have cup holders in the back, one on each side, so you rear passengers have a place to put their drinks. Another cool item is the back of the front seats, which has this like checker pattern integrated into it. I guess the theory here is you can hang stuff from it if you want to, making it a little bit more useful than a regular back of a front seat. And one more notable item in the back seat, the windows are removable. So you don't just take off the doors, the roof, you can also pull off the rear windows, again, for that full open air experience. And next up, we move on to the back of the new Bronco. You can see the massive spare tire mounted here and the third brake light above the spare tire to illuminate when the brakes are on, of course. A couple of interesting items in the back of the Bronco. One on the left, you have the latch to open up the rear tailgate. You pull it and then the tailgate opens up and swings out to the right. On the other side of the spare tire back here, you have a Bronco logo. More on that in a minute. There are quite a few Bronco logos in the rear of this vehicle. But anyway, let's open up the tailgate and talk cargo area in the new Bronco. Like I said, you open it up and it swings impressively wide to get it all the way open. And then you open up the rear glass. Now again, prototype model, pre-production, these struts in the back don't work, that's no big deal. But when you are in here, you can see a couple of interesting quirks. One, the Bronco logo again on the floor. Like I said, there are quite a few Bronco logos. There's another one in between the cargo area lighting. You have light, Bronco logo, other light. It's an interesting place to integrate one, but that's what they've done back here. And next up, a few other interesting items are printed back here. On the inside of the tailgate, you can see printed are the words accessory ready. I guess this panel could come off and you can put accessories on here, a tailgate backpack or something that can hold stuff, whatever you want. It is already ready to receive such items. You also have these cool lasso graphics that are printed next to the cargo tie downs. Not quite sure why they went with lassos. <laughs> I guess to emphasize that you can tie stuff to this, but they're there emphasizing that you can tie stuff to this. Now, to me, two of the coolest items in the cargo area of the new Bronco, this particular one doesn't have. One is the slide out tailgate tray. You can see it here. Now, when you're tailgating in a pickup truck, you put the bed down, then you can sit on the bed and tailgate at a sporting event or whatever. You can't do that here because the tailgate swings open. So Ford came up with the idea of this slide out tray that you can get, and then you can sit on that and tailgate just like you would in a pickup. That is a pretty cool idea. The other neat idea back here is the bottle opener. The new Bronco comes with an integrated bottle opener built into the cargo area. So you're camping, you want to open up a soda or a beer. Instead of looking around to find a bottle opener, where is it, whose bag is it in, you just walk up to your car, open it up. Unfortunately, again, this one doesn't have that feature, but a lot of the new Broncos will and the Bronco Sports as well. And next up, moving on to the outside of the new Bronco, I want to go over some interesting quirks and features out here, starting with some off-roading stuff. I already covered my very favorite new off-roading feature, Trail Turn Assist. Another cool benefit that the new Bronco has is the ability to disconnect the stabilizer bar automatically from inside the car. Now, the Wrangler offers this too in some trim levels, but the cool thing here is you can do it at load. So if you're off-roading and you realize that the stabilizer bar is getting in the way, you really need to disconnect it. In a Wrangler, you 
you'd have to back up, find a flat surface. In the Bronco, you can just do it. It will disconnect and then you can continue on with more travel of your front wheels. That is an incredibly cool feature and it's great that they've integrated it. And next up, since I'm outside, let's talk styling. There's a lot to discuss here, but frankly, I just love it. I love the look of the new Bronco. I love how it looks like a modern take on the original. You have the lines of the original in here, but modernized in a great way, much better than basically any other retro vehicle. This retro design trend first came about like 20 years ago, and this is the best one yet. It's taken that long to really perfect it. It is a great looking, very cool truck on the outside. And speaking of styling, there is especially a lot to love up here. I want to start with the grill, which I think is fantastic. This old school looking Bronco grill with the circular headlights and body color below the grill. So it looks like the grill is floating in place. It is a really cool design. Now there are several different grill options in the new Bronco. And you can see as I go through the various trim levels on Ford's website, you can see all of the different grills. And so you'll be able to kind of identify which Bronco is which based on which grill they have. Some of them have LED lighting like this one, which when I get a production car, I'll be able to show you how cool it looks. But I'm thrilled with the front end of this vehicle. Now this particular Bronco also has a couple of cool quirks in the front. One is the body colored Bronco in the grill. No Ford up here. It just says Bronco. That's all it needs to say. And it's colored to match the car. You also have color matched recovery hooks up here at the bottom of the front bumper. Again, kind of a nice little touch. And speaking of hooks in the front, you might be wondering about these things in the front fender right above the headlight. I certainly was. These are for limb risers. Sometimes in off-roaders, you see these high tension cables going from the top of the A pillar to around the headlight. The theory is that cable will push away limbs when you're off-roading so they don't hit the car, break the windshield, cause discomfort to the passengers, whatever. You can attach limb risers on these little attachment points. That's what they're there for. That's a pretty cool functional piece. And each of these limb risers can support up to 150 pounds each. So they can take a lot of abuse before any problems happen. It'll be very helpful if you want to really off-road this thing far. And finally, two more items I want to cover on the outside from this angle. One is these flared fenders, which just look ridiculous. These giant flares makes this thing look like a Tonka truck, like a toy, but it is just so cool. You rarely find any production car with fenders flared quite like this. One other item worth discussing, in a lot of the initial press photos, you saw a Bronco with holes in the door. That was actually this Bronco, the one I'm standing next to, but you can see that hole doors have been removed. That was a prototype idea that may turn into an aftermarket accessory, but it's not available right now. And you can see it's no longer installed on this vehicle, but it is very cool. And I hope it makes production, of course. And it's those door holes that demonstrate one of my very favorite things about the entire Bronco situation, which is that Ford clearly just had fun with it. So many automakers are so caught up in making sure everything is perfect and is just professional and how it should be for a big company to reveal. Ford was like, screw that. We're going to have some fun and just make a cool car that has some weird and cool and unusual and interesting traits. Another good example is the colors for this vehicle. There are all sorts of cool named colors. This one is pretty boring, just cyber orange, but you also have antimatter blue. You have fighter jet gray. And then there's my personal favorite area 51. <laughs> That's the name of a color. It's sort of an interesting blue gray. I'm not sure how it really relates to area 51, but I just love the fact that there are weird color names along with some of the other weird stuff like a Sasquatch package, for example. And if that doesn't have you convinced that Ford had fun with this vehicle, how about the fact that the off-road modes are called GOAT modes, G-O-A-T. It's an acronym. Now we all know GOAT as an acronym for greatest of all time. Ford has repurposed it to mean goes over all terrain, which is great. And there are eight separate GOAT modes. You have normal, eco, sport, sort of your on-road modes. Then there's slippery, sand, mud, rock crawl, and Baja. Now Baja is awesome. It's designed for like high speed desert running. So it improves your acceleration. It tightens up your shifts, but also it puts you in this off-road four-wheeling mode. And that's just a cool feature if you're ever doing Baja style driving through the sand. Now, interestingly, not all of the Bronco models offer all of the goat modes. For instance, the base model only offers five goat modes 
modes. The Big Bend version only offers six. It just sort of depends which one you get. With the Wild Track model, the top of the line one being the only version to offer all eight goat modes. Now, the craziest top line goat mode that's on the least amount of Broncos is the rock crawl mode, which is really an impressive feature. It basically uses computers to analyze when it should be locking the differential or turning off traction control or using the steering assist feature or doing all sorts of other off-roading items that normally you would do yourself. You have it in rock crawl mode, the car does all that stuff automatically. Very curious to see how that actually functions in practice and if it's as good as an experienced off-roader. Even if it isn't, it might be a good feature for novice off-roaders just trying to figure out how to do this stuff for the first time. And finally, the last thing I want to touch on is powertrains. Like I said, turbo four-cylinder in the base model, twin turbo V6 if you want to upgrade, but I suspect a V8 is coming. It would only make sense. I can't imagine they won't do a Raptor version of the new Bronco. Ford hasn't confirmed this yet, but they've built up so much interest in the Raptor after the F-150, it would probably be stupid not to. Whether it's a V8 or an even more powerful V6, we'll have to find out. But I bet there's more on the way. This new Bronco is not yet done evolving yet, or at least that's my guess. And so those are the quirks and features of the new Ford Bronco. I know you're disappointed I couldn't show you more, and I'm certainly disappointed that I couldn't get behind the wheel and drive this craziness, but that will come soon. For now, I'm thrilled that I was able to provide you the first thorough tour of the quirks and features of the new Ford Bronco. This is the new Ford Bronco. <laughs> We're already off to a great start. <laughs> And by not having a frame going around the top, it makes them a lot easier, a lot more easier. <laughs> and next up, we're done with the front seat area in the new Bronco. Time to climb into the back. Now again, I stress this is a pre-production car. It doesn't quite function as well as it should. There is a latch on the side of the front seat that you can use to pull the front seat forward and then move it up. Oh, wow, that actually worked perfectly. But then... 